Do you believe in matching your socks? <laughs> I'm matching my socks. Yeah, some people don't match their no, I socks. Match my, I match all of my socks. I actually throw out my entire closet. I think in the early stages of my career, um, there were a number of teachers and choreographers that inspired me to, you know, actually do it. And what I mean by like, do it, you know, is basically, you know, sitting down and cracking down on what I actually wanted. And what I wanted was to travel the world, you know, and was to teach in different countries, states, cities, and um, meet new people and uh, exchange energies that way, you know. And, um, you know, I, I never had the formula, you know. It was never like, okay, you do X, Y, Z, this is what's going to happen, you know what I mean? I never had the recipe um, to, you know, no one sat down and just... Hey, Phil, this is what you need to do. Go do it, you know. Um, ultimately, I had to figure it out myself. And um, what I did was, and this is before I was hired through Break the Floor. So there wasn't a company that hired me and they shipped me out. It was just basically on straight through my emails and what I sent out, you know. Um, all of that was, you know, drawn up by a plan that I came up with, you know, um, I did a lot of pitching, I did a lot of, uh, emailing, and this is before the whole Phil Wright Inc. vibe, you know, <laughs> this is the whole before Phil Wright Inc., the company, and, um, all of that existed. That was just, I was just Philip Wright. And um, I was pitching a lot. Um, I was being told no a lot. Um, and uh, I found myself in a position where I was investing in myself and I was teaching classes. I was teaching kids. I was doing what I love to do. It, and it didn't happen overnight. I started domestically. Um, I started, you know, in Florida. Uh, traveled to Tampa. Traveled to Jacksonville. Traveled to Orlando. Um, not making a dime, <laughs> you know. Not making one dollar. Um, all investing. And my friends can attest to this because I used to take them with me, you know. And um, I used to, you know, not make much at all and to fast forward to where I'm at now um, what I'm really trying to say is basically you kind of have to create your own success now and nowadays we have the tools to do so you know um, you have to create that and you know based off of what I created with the brand that I've uh, launched off and everything, um, I was able to get hired by Break the Floor. I was able to uh, have companies reach out to me and say, hey, are you willing to come out to such and such? And hey, are you willing to come out to, you know, um, you know, Chicago, New York, and, you know, Detroit, and all these different places based off of the material that everyone saw online, but no one saw the behind the scenes where I was losing money. They would, they just saw the product, you know, and the product was and is actually more valuable than the dollars that I was trying to make. Um, and I think that's key, you know, in whatever you want to do. You have to think that the U.S., the USD dollar has little to no value compared to the amount of success that you want to conjure up in your life. You know, um, that's that's the reason why I market the way I do. That's the reason why I advertise the way I do. That's the reason why, um, you know, I promote the way I do because 
that lies the value. That right there is the coin for me, you know? And, you know, looking back at a blink of an eye, now, you know, I'm making more money than I would ever have thought I would would have made. Um, Getting paid X amount of dollars for an hour class where I thought that was like crazy. There's no way I can make this much money. But... I did because I wasn't chasing the bag. I was chasing the value and how I market myself as a teacher, as a choreographer, as a person. Um, And in that value came the USD dollar. In that value came all of the success. In that value came um, all of the, I don't want to say fame because it's not fame, but social media presence you know and uh, I think the word value is king compared to the USD dollar years ago I had a hot mama's class at uh, in North Miami uh, (laughs) North Miami Florida and um, I, during that time, I had, I want to say, anywhere between 10 to 12 adult mothers that would drop their kids off to class, and uh, they would come into the Hot Mamas class. And uh, I had that class at Peach School of Dance, now called MIA Dance Factory. Um, and... Um, We had that class and it was like a hit, you know, everyone, it started off at like 10 to 12 moms and then it started to grow to like 20 and then 30 and, you know, eventually it was like the the hit of the city. So um, to fast forward, I moved to LA and I was teaching at IDA and um, I was, I was talking to a friend of mine and I was just brainstorming and uh, came kind of came up with the idea because there were a lot of kids that were in classes but all of the parents will actually sit like on the outside of the class but that you couldn't really see the class because there were no windows the only window that you had was the window on the door you know and um, they would sit along this long hallway and just wait for their child and they'll be on their phones or some of them will actually just drop them off and leave and go to the mall, you know, and then pick their child up later. But most of them, I want to say about 75% of them actually, you know, sat there and waited because class is only an hour. So they would sit there and I would, you know, I was just wondering like, dang, they just sitting here, they're not even doing nothing. You know, like, let's try to figure out some way that to get them more involved and, you know, have them do something. So I came up with the Parent Jam. And the Parent Jam basically is where the adult, the the legal guardian or um, whatever you want to call that person, and the child dances together in the class. So, um, at first it started that way, okay? It was only the adult and the child. And what I would do is have class the normal way, and essentially it turned into like a beginning class, like a beginning level class. And the moves are very repeated. Every four or eight counts, you're doing the same moves, and almost like kind of feels like a Zumba class, you know? And um, what I would do is, is nowadays what we do is we put these, we, at the end of class, we have the kids perform the routine in front of like the camera and I will video the class. So I will put them in groups, but this time now in the parent jam, I will put the parents with the child. So <laughs> when I will pull out the child to come and demonstrate, the parent will have to come with them as well. So, um, shot that and uh, posted 
um, the first Parent Jam, and uh, it was to that song. If you wanna roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it, I don't know the song. It's called Rolex. Um, and um, it went nuts on YouTube. It went crazy on YouTube. YouTube. And uh, eventually it turned into uh, parents and the students wearing matching outfits. Um, and it actually thrived off of good energy, um, positive energy, a lot of smiling because we all know that the child can dance, but most likely the, the adult did dance as well, but doesn't dance anymore, you know? And um, it ultimately turned into a family fun uh, event. And uh, I honestly didn't think it would be uh, that big. I didn't think it would, you know, go as far as it did, like how it is now. Um, currently, uh, the Parent Jam is trademarked. I do own the rights to the Parent Jam. Uh, it is a legal brand under Feel Right Inc. Um, we do have our own logo which we are getting those uh, labeled on apparel now. Um, and it's becoming a worldwide thing. We like have people from Spain requesting the parent jam. We have people from uh, Europe and you know Canada and Alaska and, well, I haven't been to Alaska yet, but <laughs> um, people all around the world just requesting the parent jam. Um, and whenever I post something about the Parent Jam, there's always other, you know, fans and friends that are reposting their versions of the Parent Jam. So, which is, which is cool. And I, I encourage anyone to go online and do their own versions of what they see. I'm always encouraging them on, on when it comes to that. Um, but... Yeah, the Parent Jam is a hit. Uh, it's been going great. And I really can't see, I can't wait to see what's what's gonna happen next. We do have some pending offers on the Parent Jam. We've also been trying to get the Parent Jam on Ellen as well, uh, the daytime TV show, um, the Ellen Show. So we're still in the midst of that exchange as well. So there's a lot of different things that are happening with the Parent Jam. Um, I'm very proud to to know that, you know, I've created something that's healthy for the environment and brings a smile to everyone's, everyone's face. Um, yeah. We've actually had um, people, um, celebrities, who've been a part of the Parent Jam. Angelique Bates, um, James Franco, um... Nail said she was gonna do it as well. Um, Ali Wong is a fan of the Parent Jam. She's a comedian, one of my favorite comedians, by the way. Um, uh, we're in talks with other celebrities, but I can't say I don't want to disclose that information. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of people that are who see the the good. The good value and the good eye in what you know I'm trying to bring to the community, you know, and uh, which is cool for me. I I I appreciate the love and the support from it, um, and it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And actually, Ty Tyrese just reposted uh, an article that was written on the Parent Jam on Facebook. Um, so word gets around. I mean pretty cool to see you know people of different statures and standards to just kind of like okay let me repost this this is dope this is dope and 